Welcome back. It's your boy Fresh. And I'm Mary and we are a co-op of nerds and today we are going to be showing you our pickups from Mo Game Con 2024. So we got to go to Mo Game Con this year. Um, so we got a Airbnb with Peter from Waves and Games, uh, Dan from Midwest Media Show, Wes and Newland from Gaming Off the Grid. Now, I don't think Newland's actually on the channel, but I think he helps with um, their booth. They had a booth there at Mo Game Con. Sean at 8 Bit Glitch 79, Tom and Lacey of Do You Nerd, uh, Chris from Telesplash Gaming, Captain Algebra, Cap, and, Cap. <laughs> and Chris from Midlife Crisis Media. And it was super awesome to get to meet all of them. It was the first time meeting any of those channels. None of them were at Sieg when we went. Well, I think that was 2022, right? Wow, has it really already been that long? I thought it was 2023. No. Uh, maybe it was 23. But I know it wasn't the most recent one. That, that one just happened. So, Tom and Lacey uh, contested video of the game Dust Sleeves and got this special dust sleeve made with all of our channel's logos. Yeah, and so each channel, their dust sleeve had their logo, like, shiny. Yeah, so see how ours is shinier and better than everyone else's? <laughs> Well, everybody else's <laughs> Yes. Uh, and then we had everyone sign it. Uh, we didn't get Wes to sign. Uh, yeah, he, we, we had it signed too late. He left super early on Sunday. He had um, a drive. Yeah. Uh, so we got two of them. So that is a very awesome keepsake. Speaking of keepsakes, um, Chris, I don't know how in the world he pulled this off, but he has his own... Boss Monster card, which is super awesome, super jealous, didn't even think about this. Uh, we have not played that game. We don't have this exact game, but we have the spin-off mm -hmm. dungeon cart, so... Uh, it can be used with the game, though, he said. Okay. Um, Lady Lacey makes famous peanut butter jelly shots, so we got a coaster. She made this shot up herself. And it tastes just like peanut butter and jelly. It, it like legitimately tastes like peanut butter and jelly. But it was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah. They also hooked us up because Do You Nerd is too nice. With a couple stickers, we got to meet the DK uh, barrel. <laughs> Some troublemakers probably trying to steal something. There's the famous barrel. Famous barrel they take to every convention. Uh, and then a little nerdling sticker. I will say that DK barrel was probably handy because anytime they bought something, they could just wheel it around. And yeah, they yeah. They have to carry it on my, their backs. my backpack does have the wheels, so we could have done that. Um, so yeah, so we left Friday morning it was about a four hour drive to mm -hmm. st louis um pretty uneventful on the way there I yeah it remember. usually is except for your bathroom breaks every five seconds <laughs> <laughs> why well, have coffee in the morning because i gotta go we did stop at burger king you know exotic burger king we don't have too many of those around here uh try that out um we get there, get to the Airbnb, and the entire street is beautiful. Yeah. Like all these, like, really, I don't know, 100 year old houses. They are um, the Park Tudor style homes, Park and they Tudor. are beautiful. So, when you first, when you kind of pulled up, I was like, oh my God, how's this many. Yeah, I didn't think we were going to this house. Especially this many dudes. Uh, us gamers tend to have a little bit wider waistlines than. Uh, the average dude, I was like, it looked tiny, but then there was like a second floor that had like two bedrooms and a bathroom. Mm -hmm. There was two bedrooms on the main floor. Then it had a, basically a full basement and just like a- With a full bathroom down there too. Yeah, full bath down there as well. Um, a huge 
ridiculous sectional couch. Nothing was. I think <laughs> it, it slept. The whole basement. It was awesome. <laughs> it slept three full-grown men. So um, very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the first night we were, we brought some alcohol to make shots with. We kind of themed them after the Mario uh, power-ups. I think they went over pretty good. I, I think I I created the recipes from from scratch. Uh, just try to base it. So we had the star power. So we we put them all on these cubes and have had everyone basically punch a block in whichever power up you got. So the shot that you got. So the star shot was um, we actually found these edible gold yeah sprinkles and uh, very pretty. And it was in. very shiny. Yes. That, that, that was no joke. Like, I was just barely tat. Like, I couldn't find, like, a good spoon. So I just took a plastic spoon, turned it around, and kind of got, like, the part, the handle part. And was just, like, tapping it just to kind of, like, just and flicker. And the whole thing was just, like. Just, you know, just a it teeny, teeny amount. And then stirred it up, and it would just glow gold. It was beautiful. I was really impressed with that, with that drink. Uh, the fire flower, so that had fireball whiskey in it to give it the heat. Uh, the mushroom drink failed. That's... I didn't think that it failed. It still tasted really good. It's just that it curdled because the liquor that went into the Baileys was slightly acidic. Yes, so I mixed Baileys and a cherry liqueur, and the cherry liqueur was far too acidic for the Baileys, so it, it's like it was like if as soon as you poured it, if you shot it, you're fine. But the first one, like I, we did, I don't know, 13 shots. We distributed like, shots before we took them. Right, we all, and so we all take one together. So all of the... <laughs> it's all just a texture thing, though. The taste was Super fine. mushroom ones um, curdled while we were waiting. <laughs> let's say... Uh, let's see... Um, yeah. Uh, oh God. So Captain Algebra owns stock in White Castle. <laughs> so he insists that every year they buy 100 sliders, and yep. then he force feeds you sliders <laughs> against your will um, until they are gone. And um, that equals. I mean, you think 100 sliders? There's about 13 people. Our average about 10 sliders a person because there are certain people like us who refuse to yeah, eat I'm not 10 eating sliders. 10 sliders. I couldn't do it. I've got, if I ate all 10 sliders, I don't think I'd be able to go to the convention. <laughs> My <laughs> belly is way too sensitive to stuff like that. I've got I annual got doctor eat. visits to them. I ate four. I ate five. I felt proud of that number. It's, it's really it's the onions. And it's like you can't get onions away from your White Castle. Like it is soaked into the bread, it's soaked into the meat, soaked into the pickles, everything. It's just covered in onions. They don't taste bad, but they give you horrible gas. So everyone's, <laughs> and my belly doesn't do well with getting things out. So it would just hold on to it and I'd have horrible stomach cramps all weekend. So I uh, measured myself and course cap gave us heck all weekend about it <laughs> i just i just got i i think i just snacked too heavy beforehand i just couldn't do it um I probably if that was if i went into it hungry then i probably could have eaten more but i was i just wasn't hungry <laughs> uh, i was just like oh, i can't do it anymore i'm gonna throw up so we did fail the 100 white castle challenge as a group now to be fair they said they did it last year they didn't lose anybody and added us too. So we ate nine that would have not have been eaten last year. And they said they still ate the hundred. So somebody's might want to double check Somebody old Captain Algebra's failed. math. Because well, uh, there were other people that refused to eat that many. Maybe. Some people ate that many and then some would not. And, and I'm sure they were, and some of, several of them regretted it. I, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably be more prone to a drinking challenge than to an eating challenge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so next day, uh, we get up. We got 
we didn't apply for the VIP that I uh, we're a pretty small channel, so I felt a little self conscious. It was a press pass, but anybody who got a press pass got one other person that could go in mm -hmm. with them. So as we well. just we just kind of showed up. Uh, well, I guess the start of day two, Saturday, day of the con, we had a uh, tire with mm -hmm. low air pressure on our rental, so we got to find a gas station, air it up, um, got in early, just basically. They, didn't, they weren't super, like, argumentative or, you know, difficult. They were just, we were just like, hey, we're with Tom and Lacey. And, name dropping. Yeah, just name dropped. And they stayed. So, Tom said he needed a replacement hand, or replacement hands, he wanted robotic hands. So, I think this was the best that we could find. <laughs> I think it's perfect. Yeah, yeah it definitely works. It works. Yep. It works. It works. Mm -hmm. I think we can help them out. Tom, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> they just let us in. So um, that was cool. I don't even think we bought anything that first hour. Basically, you got in an hour early. It was nice, though, to scope everything out before the crowd came. That's true. That's true. So um, at the convention, we got to meet uh, Pat with Show Me Retro. And he ended up coming back to the, the house later to party. Um, so the, I don't know. It, there was last year. I guess it was they had a horrible situation with the um, with the venue with the venue, and they had to move it last second. And it was super cramped. This one was wide open spaces, so mm -hmm. everyone that in our group who was crop dusting everybody, it never <laughs> really got too bad. <laughs> I never got crop dusted. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I kept a <clears throat> safe distance from people, even at its most crowded moment. It wasn't near approaching Gen Con. So. No, no. So, um, nice open. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they definitely got some room to grow if they keep that venue. They can get more vendors and more activities in that area. There was some basically unused kind of office space or little conference rooms. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, you know, if, if they had something like Sieg had where they could invite YouTubers on there to do you know, little 15 minute, half hour shows. I think that could be um, a possibility in some of those side rooms. We also got to see Retro Mikey and Retro April. Yeah, we've which, been seeing them. We haven't seen them in yes, forever. Yes, we haven't seen them in, in a couple of years now. Um, they're doing well. I don't know if Mikey will get back on YouTube. He kind of hemmed and hawed about it. Um, he's been super busy with work and you know all that stuff so but it was just nice to see him yeah and he is doing okay for those of you who were concerned um see day oh that night we all go back we all do we didn't party as hard as we did friday Everyone night Tired. Everyone was pretty sleepy. Um, so, you know, you basically eat a bunch of White Castle, poop a bunch at night, <laughs> spend all day at a con, and uh, you're pretty wore out. But we did have fun. Oh, we did get to play on Friday night. Uh, play, Rewind, Eject. Mm -hmm. It's a um, card game that we have that um, basically you pick three random movies. You have to choose one of the three to play which means you keep it as is rewind means it's due for a remaster or remake and eject means you delete it from the history of cinema and basically everyone's trying to guess what everyone else would pick so that was a lot of fun forrest gump got uh ejected from okay so to be no that wasn't on my turn but no in in their defense tom tom from Do You Nerd, deleted it, Forrest Gump from the history but of But in his defense, there were three fantastic movies there. It's very, very difficult when you get three <coughs> really close, you know, close ones together. Right, yeah. I, th I think the pick. toughest decision wasn't that one. It was yours, whereas you got Avengers Endgame, Avengers Affinity War, and Logan. Like, I talk did. about... <laughs> Like three fantastic movies, all the same genre, so you can't be like, well, I'm not that big a fan of horror movies, right. so I'll eject the horror movie. I mean, no, just... they were uh, 
I, I personally don't like Endgame, but that's just me. That um, one was my favorite. Ah, uh, Infinity War is better. Bad guys win. Um. <laughs> and uh, Infinity War was a rewind for me, and then Logan was the uh, You need to re-watch Logan. I, it was just... Logan. I think they put a little too much into one movie. I split think, it up into two movies. I think Logan might be my top three favorite superhero movies. But the ending is not what I wanted. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> You can say that about a lot of movies. You're not writing the story. They are. <laughs> um, let's see. Sunday, we had to fill up the car with air again and buy some fix-a-flat. And uh, went... It didn't go completely flat. No. It was a very, very, very slow leak. Yeah, it was, its natural tire pressure was like 33, and every morning it would be about 21. So um, we went and got breakfast at... Was it Honey Bee's Biscuits? It's Honey Bee's Biscuits and Good Eats. Yeah, that was close enough. Uh, went there, Mary Loves Biscuits, so she'll never argue that. Um, it was really good. Really good breakfast. And we got to say goodbye to everybody. The guy working there provided the best customer service I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Seriously, like, All he did was, he worked the counter and, you know, made sure your order was correct. And he was, you know, singing little tunes and... Making jokes and little puns, little puns and stuff. That's it's an excellent choice. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, this guy's so cool. He, yeah, like he has, he's he's like a cashier at a biscuit place, you know. Right. Yeah. But he's yeah. like happy-go-lucky and great customer service, great attitude. Yes. You gotta yes. love that. If you're ever in St. Louis, I recommend you hit that place up. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get what everybody came here for. I don't think I forgot anything, did I? Mm -mm. Pickups. Up first, Mary picked these out. Okay, so Lady Lacey found the green one, and then later found the red one. So these hold your Wiimotes and turn them into kind of like an NES controller. Yeah. The buttons are turned more like a Super Nintendo, but um, you do not like the controllers on the Wii. I don't. So like I the thought Wii. maybe that would be nice for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, occasionally people are like, "Hey, what?" What board games can I find that I can flip? Uh, there's not many of them. This is one. Monopoly Gamer Mario Kart. And the only reason this is worth any money is for these little... Oh, the little car pieces. Uh, and the reason it's worth money is people want these cars to put into other games and that's what we're gonna do So we're not gonna flip this. We're not gonna sell it. We actually only, I don't think the guy no one or The guy who did it knew it was worth anything because he sold it to me for five bucks but like if They sold extra cars and separate packs and if you got the whole thing you can get about 50 bucks out of it mm -hmm. uh, 8-bit glitch is a super nice guy and bought Georgie this and Georgie was thrilled. Lenticular was so poster excited. with Venom and Carnage. That was he's, so nice. He's a him. huge Venom fan. Um, obviously, he forgot about Grace, and I don't want that fight. So <laughs> we had to get Gracie one too. So their their girly stuff was a little lacking. So we had to get them. She uh, likes the Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare. Before, she does. She has a couple of their shirts, and she likes the movie. Yeah. All right, uh, the video games. Everyone came for the video games. We got two new most expensive games in the top 10. Two new top 10 most expensive. Let's get to the other ones first. We got all three James Ponds. <laughs> James Pond 1. James Pond 2. James Pond 3. So I didn't pay, I only paid Price charting prices once. That was for the biggest game. Um, everything else I got for under price charting. Again, uh, typically I just look. If the vendor is over price charting, I just I just leave. Um, if the vendor is under price charting, you know, I'm going to buy, you know, three, four, five games, group them together, try to get a, a 
bolt discount. Uh, works pretty much every, you know, not going works pretty much every time. I don't think anyone's ever argued with me. Um, okay, the incredible crash test dummies based off the cartoon, which is based off the, uh, what do you call that? It was like a set of commercials for car safety. Yeah. And somehow they got they got their own action figures. My cousin had all their action figures. I used to love that. Um, it's, it sounds so stupid in 2024. Everybody, to talk about all the it. kids were impressed by the yeah. dummy crashing in the car. King of the Monsters. That's a fighting game. A kaiju fighting game. DJ Boy. I have not played this. Maybe you make music. I don't know. <laughs> Wardner? Oh, some wild looking art there. <laughs> Talk about horrible cover art. Trampoline Terror. <laughs> That's about <laughs> as basic as you're going to get. Terror on the trampoline. Yeah. Twin Cobra. So it's either a shoot 'em up or a uh, sort of flight sim, maybe. Maybe both. Maybe. Techno Cop. So I, I rented this game from Blockbuster. Um, so you play as Techno Cop. Are each, you a RoboCop? No. Okay. Each level you are chasing down a villain, you only have a certain amount of time to do it. So, you know, he's got his goons everywhere and you're trying to make it through the maze and okay. find him and, and fight him. It's timed levels. Yes. It's always difficult. Yes. Pirates of the Dark Water. This was another one of those um, animated movie or animated television shows. I don't know if I've... It, the name sounds familiar, but I just, I cannot place it. You remember that one? I can't either. It looks familiar, but the name itself doesn't yeah. strike. I don't know. Uh, Insector X. I do think this one is a shoot 'em up. Insector X with the bad mm -hmm. killer bug. I think you're killing bug. I think you're that guy oh. shooting bugs. And then Sagaya. I'm even more sure this one's a shoot 'em up. I could be wrong in all of these. That'd be funny. <laughs> So, our 10th most valuable game in the entire collection. Drum roll. Splatterhouse on the TurboGrafx-16. Complete in box. Look at all those wonderful images. <laughs> um, this is a great game. Full of gore. Um, it's a beat em up. Walk to the right. You get to like, you got this bat and you'll hit a guy and it'll just come flying at the screen all bloody and stuff. It's awesome. And we don't have the Turbo Graphics, but. Yes, we do. Well, we don't have an actual Turbo Graphics yes. 16. We have a analog duo. Correct. Which will play them. And the new number one most expensive game in the collection Crusader of Senti. So this, obviously, our Sega video comes out, starts, this, the new Sega series comes out in August, mm -hmm. and this will be featured in that, but it's the most expensive, minus Outback Joey. No one cares about Outback Joey. It's the most expensive Genesis game they make, so going through and trying to get some of the heavy hitters out mm. of the way early. And he hemmed and hawed over it for forever. I did. We well, found it in that first hour. Yes. It was the very first booth. Um, he had 625 on it. And price charting had it at 550 So I was like, all right, well, it's here. But my goal was to get that game. Musha was the fallback plan if I couldn't find that and they didn't have Musha. And Cap wanted that one. Cap didn't want that, but he, he's doing complete in box. I'm doing loose cards, so I'll spend a third of what he spends. But so that, like I said, is about 75 overpriced charting, so I was like, no, no thanks. 
and then went through the rest of the convention never saw another copy we did see one complete in box for two grand um i will pick up complete in box games you know as needed or if they're not if they're significantly underpriced charting i'll pick them up but normally i'm getting loose uh, so yeah, so I, I hemmed and hauled and you know, I was I went back to the booth and I was trying to figure out well, let me see if I can find a bundle, you know, and Try to get them to throw in, you know, some games to make up the difference, but overall spend uh, What they were asking for and I just couldn't find one that one or two games that really fit that it was like they either had really high-end Genesis games or really nothing Genesis yeah. games and it but was some like, of them they had them in a bucket yeah so so I was like eh, I don't think it's gonna work so eventually I waited to the end of the con went up to them and told them you know this is the price I'm willing to pay which was price charting number and they accepted Good. I do think it was smart to wait to the end of the con so that way they had all day to not sell it mm -hmm. and then someone finally comes and offers them maybe anything mm -hmm. maybe they never got an offer on it um and they accepted it. so it was a lot of fun we got to meet a lot of people that we've been friends with on the internet for a long time mm -hmm. you know do you nerd 8 big glitch we're literally commenting on our first video ever so it was awesome to see him after god what five years four years something like that it's been a long time four, um, year, four and a half years <clears throat> really really awesome to meet them they're just as great as in person as they are as you would want them to be you know they're not fake they're not putting on a show for the camera who they are on camera is who they are in real life so we're going to link everybody in the description so if you don't follow them go ahead and give them a follow i feel like i've been talking a lot yep. you didn't talk much because you have 20 seconds left all right 20 seconds left. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Hey, I'm sitting over here sweating. I'm like, it's running out of time. It's running out of time.